Hello everyone and welcome to the open day for the MA Internet Equalities at the Creative Computing Institute. My name is Georgina and I'll be your host today. And we're going to share all about the MA in Internet Equalities and in order to do that we'll have with us Dr. Bixcraft, course leader of the MA, and Nafpri Kalra, a student course, a student uh, at the at the course this year, to give you an overview of how the session is structured. We're going to start talking about the Creative Computing Institute first, and we've got three amazing videos which will walk you through all the facilities and spaces that are available to students at the CCI, which will talk you through the research, the social mission and the public program that we have here at the Institute. And another video that will tell you a little bit about the vibrant local community and area that we have here in Southeast London. After that, I'm going to invite Dr. Pixcraft to join us and they will give us a presentation about the approach, the structure and the units that the MA course entails. And right after that, we'll move on to the Q&A session with current student Nafpreet and Pix. We've got a list of frequently asked questions that we'll be covering. And during that time, we also encourage you to share any questions, any doubts that you have about CCI or about the course, and we'll do our best to cover them during the Q&A section. Before we continue, a very important note to say that if you have difficulties following along the session, please know that the entire session is being recorded and it will be re-uploaded onto CCI uh, YouTube channel with closed captions in English. So know that if there's any detail that you miss, you'll have the opportunity to catch up at your own pace after the session ends today. So let's get this started. <laughs> We'll begin by watching a video that will walk you through all the facilities and resources and tell you all about CCI. I hope you enjoy the video and see you very soon. Welcome to the CCI facilities tour. Over the next few minutes, we are going to show you around the campus and tell you a bit about the facilities and resources available to our students. CCI South London is located across two buildings along Peckham Road in Camberwell. We share our buildings with Camberwell College of Arts, which is a fantastic opportunity for CCI students to get to know and collaborate with students studying courses like Fine Art, Photography, Graphic Design and Illustration. The Green Coat Building hosts teaching spaces and technical spaces for students studying Creative Computing and Creative Robotics. It also hosts the Dark Lab for AR, VR and Interaction Design. This summer, we are going to be creating additional technical spaces in this building to support the new Creative Robotics courses that open in September 2023. CCI is located on the fifth floor of Peckham Road, where we have teaching spaces and technical labs, as well as a kitchen, which is our main student hangout and study space. We have several high-spec workstation computers where you can work on machine learning, data science and other intensive computing tasks. We have a library on site with access to a range of books, ebooks, periodicals and databases. Our dedicated librarian, Beninia, ensures that these resources are kept up to date to help you complete your studies. Across the courtyard is Gardens House, one of a growing number of halls of residence across London. And on the ground floor is the Learning Zone, a space for self-directed study that is open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, to all UAL students. There are places to eat, like our canteen, student advice centre and support services, and an art and material shop. In summer 2023, we will redevelop the former London College of Fashion building at High Holborn. We will share this building with UIL's brand new PhD hub, which will help to ensure that CCI's focus remains around the development of world-class research. At our Holborn site, we will create new technical, teaching and library facilities to support our new courses in computer science and data science. The technicians here at CCI all have a decade of experience doing really cool stuff with emerging technology. We'd love to help the students here with any questions they have about their projects. The Dark Lab is for experimenting with interaction, projection, sound and VR. Great for permanent projection setups. We've got a couple of VR booths, we've got loads of speakers and many other toys to play with. I specialize in creative coding and especially interactive things using 
Kinects and cameras and game engines, 3D graphics. We have a whole bunch of equipment that students can take out on loan, including projectors, Kinects. We also have laptop lockers where you can get a laptop to work with. Physical computing really is just the connection to the physical world, to the data. Students have, have played with physical computing all sorts of different ways. A lot of interaction with gaming and the VR world as well. Sensing various different bits and pieces using touch especially. All sorts of different sensors uh, to put things in a virtual world or vice versa. So they could have things coming from a virtual world and bringing them into the real world. We generally lend Arduinos to all of the students and with that we have a collection of different modules. This allows us to interact with the world in various different ways. Those modules could be sound sensing, they could be image sensing, they could be sensing the environment in some other way. The benches here are for the students to solder and uh, prototype, put different boards together. We have different components with different levels of exploration with electronics so you can quickly get something together on breadboard or you might want to make something that's more solid. I help students who want to use the digital knitting machine, the digital embroidery machine, and who are also thinking about incorporating electronics or computation into textiles or wearable kind of technology. We have a silver reed digital knitting machine. Um, so that's a domestic knitting machine that can be computer controlled, so you can use it to create digital patterns, and that's used to produce knitted fabric. I tend to think of it like a 3D printer kind of for textiles. And then the other textiles machine that we have is a brother digital embroidery machine. So that's kind of fully automated programmable embroidery machine that you can use to embroider textiles. This is Digital Fabrication Lab and we have 3D printing machine and laser cutting machine here. For our 3D printers, you just drag your design into the software and slicing it and directly push it to the printer and your design will be materialized. For the laser cutter, it's also very efficient, even very complex pattern. It'll only take like uh, several minutes. Most of students will use it to um, generate the housing for their physical computing things. It helps students to materialize their project quickly. To find out more about our facilities and equipment, please visit wiki.cci.arts.ac.uk. Now, a lot of students are interested in finding out more about the research themes that we explore here at CCI and the social mission that underpins all these research, teaching and the public program activities. In the following video, we'll share with you all about it. I hope you enjoy it. CCI's key research themes are creativity, machine learning, and AI, human-computer interaction and platforms, and big data and digital citizenship. So we're interested in how machine learning and AI can transform people's creative practices, enable the creation of totally new kinds of work in music and art, and enable new people to get involved in creative practice. We've created a lot of software tools like Wekinator, Mimic, and InteractML, which are used by tens of thousands of people around the world to make new music and art and games. We've had staff and students exhibit work that's created with AI at venues like the Whitney and the Barbican, um, and we've had collaborations with artists and musicians like Arca, Massive Attack, and others. A number of staff and students are also leaders in community and activist groups. For instance, the Code Liberation Foundation teaches women and non-binary people how to make games, and the Critical Platform Studies Group explores how digital platforms might encode and even reproduce patterns of problematic power structures in society. This rich and exciting research environment is the product of many staff coming together from lots of different disciplines. These include not just computer science and art, but music, engineering, design, philosophy, art history, and all sorts of other domains. We all bring our excitement and experience from these different research projects with us into the classroom. Uh, and it's a place that I really love teaching and I'm excited to share it with you. CCI's teaching, research, and outreach activities are all informed by our social mission. This mission has three components. They are digital inclusion, diversity in technology, and digital entrepreneurship. 
First, we are committed to the inclusion of marginalized people in the creation of technology and in the use of technology. This informs what we teach both in the classroom and beyond the classroom. It also means that we have to recognize that the lack of diversity in the tech workforce right now both uh, stems from and contributes to broader problems in our society, and we have to address these too. Secondly, we're really mindful about the impacts that technology has on the broader world. We have to recognize the potential harms that come with technology, whether that means um, harms to well-being or even exacerbating bias and inequality. At the same time, we're very involved in projects that aim to have a more positive impact on the world. We are collaborating with the Decolonizing Art Institute at UAL right now to try to surface and mitigate bias in museum collections across the UK. We have staff and students, some with disabilities themselves, who are making technologies that enable new ways for disabled people to interact with technology and create new forms of technology for themselves. And third, CCI is committed to creating digital entrepreneurship opportunities for marginalized people. If we want tech to be a force for good, we need to enable people to apply technology in ways that they're excited and passionate about, where they know technology is gonna be useful. So this means applying creative computing to new application areas, to addressing needs in people's communities, and to affecting social change. The Creative Computing Institute's public program can be anything from talks, workshops, short online tutorials, conversations, and it's really aimed at engaging with the community outside of our students. Students joining it too, but it's very much for the general public. The reason I run it with so much passion is because it's a part of my ongoing research and practice, which is about including unheard voices in technology development. I think that we've got as much to give communities as we can learn as an institution from communities. And so engaging with the general public is engaging with users and having that dialogue, that critical dialogue, and then coming back and designing software and hardware from a more informed position is really important. I would love to tell you a little bit more about TechYard. It's a huge part of the CCI's public programme and I've been running it for almost three years now. So it started in the pandemic as an online tutorial course for young people and now it's grown into a hybrid programme. We go into schools, we run workshops here at the CCI, we collaborate with galleries all around London and hopefully soon beyond. And again, it's the ethos of engaging people outside of our student cohort with the critical creative computing conversation, ethics, and of course, like skills as well, right? So we can run 3D modeling workshops, virtual reality workshops, and we work with beyond young people now. So I do loads of stuff for young people, but also done some work with adults as well. Examples of past public program workshops that we've run include inclusive design in wearable technology, designing a feminist chatbot, and queering voice AI trans-centered design. And the last video we've got prepared for you today will give you an idea of how vibrant and exciting is the area and culture that surrounds CCI's campus in Southeast London, in Peckham and Camberwell. The area of Peckham and Camberwell is very much becoming a centre for art and performance and music and so it's a natural home for what is a brand new centre of creative technology. There's so much to do in terms of eating out or bars, pubs. It's very easy to get to like Brixton, Peckham from Camberwell. I love Peckham. Something about the area, Camberwell, Peckham, Newcross, Deptford, with Goldsmiths as well, kind of creates quite a nice community. I definitely feel like where I live, which is close by, has a kind of community spirit. Every year it just grows in terms of more things to do, cafes, galleries. The galleries I like to go to is the Hannah Barry Gallery, the South London Gallery, Peckham Levels, do a lot of pop-up galleries, so it's always changing. Peckham Plex is really cool. It's just next to Peckham Levels. The best thing about Peckham Plex is the cinema tickets are $4.99 and it's the cheapest cinema in London. Also in the area, there's lots of parks. My favourite park is Brunswick Park. It has Bauer Art Gallery set up by UAL students. 
it's just got such great access into other areas in town. The East London line goes straight to Hoxton, Shoreditch, Dalston. The community at CCI, really friendly. Everyone can just express themselves and just be themselves. It's my third year studying at the Creative Computing Institute and I've been really enjoying my time and I'm very happy with all the knowledge I've got from the tutors and my peers. The community is really nice here. I feel like every time I'm stuck, I can always find the right person to talk to and I always get further with my project. Something about the space is really nice. It's a very kind of calming environment. Nice teachers, I find. So it, it kind of creates a welcoming environment. I feel like I can spend a whole day here and feel pretty happy. I can safely say that the technicians are really attentive and kind of excited as well. <laughs> if you get Pete talking about something, he'll talk to you for like a very long time about like 50 different things that you could be doing with what you have. I also go to the technical space quite a lot because it's really nice to just walk in and ask questions and then solving the, the issues that always come up when you code. I think the most valuable thing I've learned here is that just by talking with people and asking them about what they're interested about and what they're passionate about, this is how I've learned most. All right, now it's time to start talking about the MA Internet Equalities, the reason why you're all here today. <laughs> so I'm very happy to pass on the mic to my colleague, Dr. Pixcraft, who is the MA's course leader and who will share all about the course approach, units and content with you. Hello, Pix. Hi, uh, thank you, Georgina. Uh, pleased to be with you all today and uh, really enjoying watch watching those videos myself. I'm here just to give you a little bit of an overview, as Georgina mentioned, of the MA Internet Equalities program, and then we'll jump into some more detailed Q&A. As you might have seen on the course website, the MA Internet Equalities program explores how power relations are organized, embedded, and perpetuated in internet technologies and how they can be reorganized or challenged through critical creative and activist practice. Before I talk about the course structure, just a little bit about me. I am Dr. Peaks Craft. They, tell, they call me Dr. Peaks because I am a doctor. And my journey to the University of Arts London or UAL as we call it, uh, has been a bit of a journey. Uh, through a number of different, predominantly academic institutions. And I've found my way here and quite like it here, and I hope you will too. Having been through a lot of universities and now leading this MA course, which is uh, nominally taking a kind of critical orientation, I am often inspired by a question that a colleague of mine from Georgetown University, Professor Kaz Wong, asked uh, in a conversation we were having about if critical thought and action are actually possible within these neoliberal educational institutions where, where I find myself at least and have found myself now for many years. And I don't know the answer to that question, but the approach that I take towards critical thought and action involves three components. One is myself taking personal responsibility for the ways that I'm complicit in the systems of oppression that universities actually play a big role in perpetuating. Second is trying to engage in divergent forms of knowledge production and be open-minded about uh, different ways of seeing and understanding the world. And third is beginning the work that I do with a theory of social change and thinking about how, whether it's my teaching or my organizing in the course or organizing outside the course, how we can think about any of those as engaging in some kind of action towards specific uh, social or political objectives. 
And the key questions I ask myself in taking these different approaches is who is benefiting from my work and the various aspects of my work? Who am I in solidarity with and how am I accountable to them? And how does my work shift power? And so I hope that we can also ask the same kinds of questions about this whole MA Internet Equalities program. What will be unique about the MA Internet Equalities program is the intersection of technology and arts and design with activism. So unlike the other programs in the Creative Computing Institute or at other universities where you might find uh, a course that focuses on either technology or arts and design or as uh, in other programs at the Creative Computing Institute, the intersection of those two areas, what the MA Internet Equalities brings in is a real focus on overlapping with this third area of taking action and having an activist orientation. As far as what the course actually looks like, I'll just walk through the units, the different classes that are, that are offered and what the students in this program study in each of those units. Here is the teaching team for this year. Uh, we have a fabulous uh, team of, of tutors who uh, perhaps we can talk a little bit more about in the Q&A section, uh, who lead all of the units that I'll, that I'll now go into some detail about. The MA Internet Equalities Program is uh, 18 months long and is composed of four terms. Uh, the first term is three top classes. The second term is two. The third is also two. And then the final term is independent research on a final major project. In the first term, which is uh, 10 weeks long, as all the terms are, the three courses, uh, the three units are intersectional internets, methods for equitable technology development, and feminist coding practices. In intersectional internets, uh, this year uh, I've organized this, this unit as a set of three different tutors who are each giving their own perspective on what internet, intersectional internets means to them. So that is how the concept of intersectionality or the, the ways in which uh, multiple uh, intersecting characteristics of identity can create unique experiences uh, combines with considerations of the internet and, inter inter and information technologies. Uh, each of the tutors gives, gives their own perspectives on that, how they, how they see this area of intersectional internets, as well as how it appears in their own work. Methods for equitable technology development is a little bit more of a design-focused unit. In, in this methods class, the students learn about different kinds of design methods that can help orient uh, technology or a project involving technology towards um, goals of equity, inclusion, or justice, and surveys different ways that researchers and practitioners have done that in the past. Feminist coding practices, the, the third unit of, of this first term, is a more hands-on programming or coding class. And this class is uh, led by one of our wonderful specialists in programming and provides an inter introduction to students on uh, web coding, in particular HTML and JavaScript coding, so that by the end of the class, even if you're coming in with absolutely no coding background, you could still complete a small web programming project like creating a feminist chatbot is the, the final project for this class this year. In the second term, there are two option classes. Uh, so students can choose to take either one or both of those and a third third class on human rights and computation. The, the two option classes are first on computational inequalities, 
And this unit covers uh, issues of computational or algorithmic bias, thinking about ideas like surveillance capitalism and understanding how these problems and challenges of technology impact on people's lives. In designing for responsible innovation, this class will actually be led by a practicing activist who will bring students through uh, the processes of designing a campaign and understanding how to execute on uh, milestones and objectives in, in trying to achieve uh, strategies for, for social change in the technology sector. In the final unit, which actually extends across the second and third term, students will learn about human rights and computation. So this is a closer look at some of the specifically human rights concerns in the, in the technology sector or implicated in the technology sector. And this is another unit that will be led by uh, a collection of tutors, each doing a workshop themselves on how they view this uh, intersection of human rights and computation and how, how this topic comes up in their own work. The final taught unit is in term three, and this is platform potentials, which focuses on the role of internet platforms, for example, social media or mobile apps, and both activism uh, as well as uh, the ways that corporations, states, and, and other organizations or firms uh, use these platforms in order to understand what, what potential there is and what challenges there are in uh, looking at information technologies from the point of view of platform studies. Uh, last year, this, this unit was led by, uh, well, through a collaboration with the AI for the People. Uh, this year, the unit will be um, redesigned by one of our uh, members of, a permanent member of staff. The final, uh, the final term involves the student thesis and research project. This can take any number of different forms. Uh, some students this year are interested in perhaps producing a kind of video output as a final major project that then they would uh, write some reflections on as well for the written component of the final major project. Uh, but in the past, students have looked at having coding as the actual research part of this and uh, writing, writing reflections on that or undertaking a social science research project. Uh, this is very much driven by your own interests and what you'd like to be supported in doing for your own independent work to cap off the program. The style of learning and teaching in the MA is quite varied. Uh, there are lectures and seminars, uh, crits and visits, uh, workshops and homework, uh, group work and individual work. And the assessment styles are also varied from writing long form essays to short form blog posts to uh, one of these assessments involves uh, drafting pages of a zine, a short um, visual presentation of ideas uh, to more open-ended artwork uh, or uh, prompts, creative prompts for, for individuals to be more uh, self-directed in, in how you'd want to complete the assessment. Just to wrap up, I have included here some details of applying to the MA Internet Equalities program. The application is, uh, I think, fairly brief and mostly just asks for your CV or resume and a uh, brief statement about yourself. And there are two deadlines for consideration, one coming up in December and then another in April. Uh, I hope to uh, receive your application and I look forward to reading it.
Thank you so much, Bix, for your super insightful presentation. Now, it's a pleasure to invite Nafpreet to this virtual space. Nafpreet is a current student at the MA in Senate Equalities and will share with us their experience at the course. And we've got around 20 minutes now, a little bit more, even 30 minutes, um, to go through the frequently asked questions that we have gathered. And we really encourage you to share with us any doubts, any comments, anything you would like to find out more about. We'll be here to talk about it. And in the meantime, we'll be going through this list of questions. So shall we start? <laughs> Do you want to introduce yourself, Nafpreet, before we start? That would be lovely. Sure. Um, hi, I'm Nafpreet. I use she, her pronouns. And I'm currently doing the MA Internet Equalities course. I'm on the first term out of the four. Um, and I've been just completely enjoying kind of understanding how the creative activist and critical approaches that come together in kind of an area of study that I've never really been able to find other people who are also interested in. Um, so I've been having a really interesting time. I'm currently doing my chat bar and um, it's, yeah, it's very really good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nafpri. That's amazing. And may I ask you as well, what is your background of studies? Because I think it's very interesting for people also to hear about where they come from, what areas, and just to give an idea of what, what are the possibilities, because literally it's endless in this case. So it would be lovely to hear a little bit more about that and your own interest in, in being here at the, at the MA. Yeah, that's also something I was so interested in, like having met other people on the course, how like people have such different backgrounds coming into it which has been really interesting to share ideas and like understanding like, the different approaches people have. Um, for me, I've come from a very like, academic background into this. Um, I did my undergraduate in politics and sociology, and I really got kind of into this area of like internet uh, technology, kind of looking at how structural inequalities play out, primarily through kind of the, so the sociology of the internet and sociology of technology um so it was quite like it, this course was quite different for me because it wasn't purely academic it was actually having completely different approaches so the creative approaches to like a project was so unheard of for me um which is really exciting but also I did have some apprehensions before about you know I don't know how to code will that be a problem like I'm not I've never really done like creative like, te like learning and teaching and learning before so I was worried about that at the start but I think like the whole everything is from the baseline there actually everyone's coming from different experiences already and so it isn't as though there's any kind of pre-existing knowledge you need mm -hmm. in any of this you kind of have uh you get taught the basics of coding and everything's at kind of your own pace um which is really great for me but it's also meant I've been able to explore things in different ways that I didn't think I would before um, so it's been really cool navigation of kind of my own academic interest and how maybe actually there are other ways to answer questions mm. thanks for sharing your experience Nafpreet that's amazing to hear thank you beautiful so shall we start with the first question we've got so this one will be displayed on the screen and it says, what mix of content on coding, activism and design will there be in the course? Dix, would you like to pick up this one? Sure, yeah. Uh, as, as I said before, and as, as enough group was just saying, uh, it's important to emphasize that there, there, there aren't really specific prerequisites as for uh, what you might come into the program knowing. There certainly is not a requirement to know anything about coding or uh, there are also our students who are coming in with little experience in maybe the social sciences or the, the theory side as well. Um, you know, those who, who have a little bit more of one tend to have a little bit less of the other. Uh, so it's great to have, I think, that um, mix of, mix of people coming from different backgrounds uh, to be able to learn from each other. And that's also reflected in the program of study. It's two taught units that involve coding. 
And the, the level of coding there is such that if you don't know anything, ideally you'll still come out knowing something about coding and making software. Uh, and if you do come in knowing a bit about coding or programming, you can um, perhaps complete those, those units at a bit more of an advanced level um, according to your own in interest and experience. Um, activism and design are, are really uh, both focal points throughout the program. Uh, I think there probably is not any taught unit that doesn't touch on activism in some way. And uh, I think they all have major kind of design orientations as well. Thank you, Peaks, for covering this one. And something that just crossed my mind as well, which would be amazing to hear a little bit more about, is what makes this MA so unique um, at like in a creative university like UAL? I think that's something that maybe we could be sharing a little bit more about. Um, what is the value really of you know being uh, studying at this huge university full of creative people? Like, what's what value does it add to all the topics and all the areas that you'll be exploring during the course from your perspective, Pix? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great point. Uh, I before before I came here, actually, I I had limited experience in the arts and was coming at this much more from uh, a little bit of the design side in the field called human computer interaction, which st studies a bit about the design of technology and uh, a good bit of the activism side. But I have found it to be a really kind of nurturing environment for my own uh, creativity and creative practice. And, and I hope it's the same for, for students who come here. Uh, as Georgina was highlighting, it's uh, the first university where I've been at that, uh, you know, just looking around at, at who is here, uh, it's clear that it's a lot of creative people. And I've been very inspired by that. Uh, I think the types of work that you can do in this program because of the, the flexibility and because of the institutional support there is for expressing yourself through a variety of media uh, are really uni unique compared to what you would be able to do uh, at a university that doesn't have the arts focus. So I think Considering that we do have uh, significant expertise on the kind of software programming side amongst our staff and amongst our students, uh, and that, that is then situated within this uh, you know, Creative Computing Institute and University of the Arts, uh, it, it really presents a, a, a unique kind of opportunity to, to be thinking about uh, social issues and technology. Hmm. Thank you, Pix. Would you like uh, Would you like to add something else there, Nafbrit, about your own experience being here at UAL and NCCI? Yeah, sure. I think in a similar way, um, being in like a creative environment kind of fosters so many like new ways of approaching academia, new ways of approaching kind of design, which I think is really amazing I get like walking around there's kind of already this atmosphere of like creating the future and like making these new things which is um like makes the studying so much like so much more novel and like different in kind of any better way um I think doing something where I can have this creative approach has opened up kind of a lot of interests of mine that I've like not been able to like look out since like I, don't know, I did like GCSE art and that wasn't so great so I think doing like having the ability and like the potential to bring together a, a creative approach to kind of academic um, topics is really important particularly for this area because you know, that's the only way we can think about new ways of approaching the internet and new kind of alternative futures um, so I think this really is like, the place to be studying kind of the internet and technologies if you do 
like have any understanding of kind of the way that oppressions manifest or Thank you, Navpreet. Oh, can I just add to that? I think Navpreet brought up a really important point here, which is that, which I also relate to around uh, the arts focus also bringing out for me a lot of self-exploration of, of interests that I, that I haven't been able to explore in, in other places. And I think that uh, because doing art and learning kind of artistic way of thought has so much to do with identity and self-expression that uh, it, it can really be be a place to uh, explore uh, if, if you haven't had that kind of opportunity in the past or or if you have to, to go a bit further on that journey. Mm. Thank you, Bix, for adding on that. Beautiful. Moving on, the next question that we have says, what is being included as internet technologies at the MA? Would you like to pick this one up, Pix? Sure. Yeah, I think internet technologies could just as well be called information technologies. Uh, this is anything, uh, any kind of modern technology that uh, uses the internet, the World Wide Web, the uh, modern computing infrastructures. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pix. And another one that I've got for you as well. <laughs> How is power being defined in the course? Yeah, thanks, Georgina. Um, this is one that uh, I think is a bit more of an academic question. Um, and I don't necessarily think that um, defining things is always as important as some people seem to think it is, but um, the definition of power that my research group, the Critical Platform Studies group has, has in the past used is a multifaceted assemblage of the direct and indirect interactions and influences of people, institutions, infrastructures, norms, and other social structures and phenomena that determines and has the capacity to determine personal, social, or societal change. But that's a lot of words and, um, I think power is what power does, and there are many different ways that power manifests in society and in our lives. And so uh, I would say that studying power or having power in mind when thinking about technology uh, is, is kind of a process, again, of uh, self-reflection, but also reflecting on the kind of material situation of, of society and of difference in society. Thank you, Pix. Beautiful. Moving on, we've got uh, one question that we receive quite, quite often, which is about the career paths that uh, could lead from this course. Uh, since it's such a, a new course that we have here at CCI, it would be amazing to hear a little bit about the prospects of, you know, what sort of like career opportunities could students get after studying. So this one's for you as well, Pix. <laughs> yeah, sure thing. In terms of the potential career paths, I think there are many from art and design to consulting or entrepreneurship or journalism, communications, or if you want to get involved in project management or government and policy, public policy. Um, the, there are a number of ethics teams at different uh, technology companies that deal with either product liability or harm mitigation. And there are also a growing number of firms in what in the United States at least is being called public interest technology. Uh, as for what the alumni of the program um, who are just now about to graduate. So it's hard to say exactly um, what will happen, but it looks like the kind of trajectories that the students from, from last year are taking uh, include going further into maybe artistic careers through residency programs or uh, continuing on with studies and research towards perhaps uh, PhD study, for instance, uh, as well as the kind of entrepreneurial consulting direction of 
um, kind of creating creating some sort of uh, spin-off from from work that's been explored in the in the degree. Thank you, Pete. We received a, a question from from the chat, so I'm just going to display it here. And it says, can students take up courses, possibly electives, across other departments at UAL? Wow, such a good question. Mm -hmm. um, that is one that I have not been asked before, actually, and I would have to look into it. The, my, my impression is that it would depend on what specific classes you're wanting to take, as I think it would be a negotiation between myself and the course leader for whichever uh, courses you are interested in. Uh, there was last year, one of the units, uh, the Designing for Responsible Innovation, I led that unit last year with a colleague of mine from the London College of Communication. And we actually had uh, a few students from that degree program come visit our lectures. So there, there is some precedent for that kind of uh, cross department interaction. And I'd be happy to look into what, what we can make possible for you depending on your interests. Beautiful. I would also like to add there that there's um, a lot of opportunities at UAL to engage with other colleges and, and other groups of students. Uh, there's like intensive course happening, which uh, we organize at CCI, but also a lot of workshops happening across campuses. So there's always a lot of activities going on that could potentially help you learn about other fields of interest and connect with other people. And yeah, it's such a, a vibrant community in that way that hopefully you could also get an opportunity to, yeah, to connect with different people across the university. Amazing. Okay, so moving on, another question that um, would be great to cover is about the projects or assignments that students will be working on. So I thought that maybe enough, Preet, you could talk us a little bit about what's your experience been like so far? What sort of projects are you working on? And yeah, what's other prospects of, of what's coming next? Yeah, sure. Um, I guess I can speak for what I'm doing right now. And um, that's kind of what was mentioned. There's first the Feminist Bot, um, which is a project in the Feminist Coding Practices module. Um, and this kind of, what I think all the projects and assignments are kind of, what's so great about all of them is that you really can approach them in any way you want and from whatever background or kind of what level of expertise you're at. So it's quite a nice independent, but guided independent study. And so kind of however you want to make your project, like what you want it to be, whether you want this just to be an assignment that you submit because for the course or it's not like a bigger thing outside of the study, like outside, like that can be part of your other interests, um, which is very amazing. So for the, the feminist bot now, I'm doing kind of like an organizing feminist uh, like resource where there's lots of resources for groups who want to organize politically uh, in society. And so I'm using kind of everything I've learned in class and my own interests in like political organizing to create this bot, which will be part of a website that hopefully I'll actually be able to use um, and like share. So there's, I think, lots of realm for doing things that you're already being interested in with these projects. Um, another one is uh, the blog post, which is uh, a comparative short form essay of two different theories. Again, theories that you're interested in. Um, and throughout the class, we've been doing different kind of creative approaches to understanding how these two theories interact, which will then become the essay with the other um, kind of parts of the assignment attached. So we made kind of maps, um, made kind of like zines and manifestos. So it's all kind of the different, again, like every single module like combines all the different approaches that you might want to take. It's they're all creative and activist driven and academic. Um, and then the other one is a contribution to a zine um, for the inter intersectional internets, which 
is kind of your response to what you like learnt in class, which again is a very kind of broad thing you can respond to. And so all these three projects are very different, um, but very much informed by how you've enjoyed these classes, how you've experienced them, what you've taken away. So they're like not really the projects and assignments that I think at least I was very used to in kind of undergraduate degree, but also in school where products are very much like you have to follow this strict guideline and do something just to submit it. These are kind of much broader in your life, I feel, and more broad to your own interests and own ways of responding to things, um, which just go beyond kind of the classroom. Thank you, Nafreed. That's amazing. Would you like to add something there, Bix? Yeah, just to say uh, um, one bit of that that I think also uh, is perhaps a little bit unusual and, and I think really welcome that, that at least one student has uh, taken advantage of last, last year is um, personally, I don't, I don't mind at all if, if the work that you do for your you know, termly assessments or for your thesis involve some kind of collaboration with other people or groups that are totally not related to the program or the university. Uh, I certainly, oops, my lights have gone off. Um, certainly welcome that kind of collaborative work. Um, and from the, from the kind of university administration perspective, there, there has to be some aspect of it that's your own work that you can identify as being your contribution. Uh, but as long as there is that, I think, the, the more that you can use the time that you're in the degree program to uh, grow your own practice and build relationships with, with people, whether inside the university or out, uh, I think, I think uh, that all is very welcome. Mm. Thank you, Peaks. So we've already covered the following one, but I think it would be useful to just remind everyone about it and it's about the application process um we get a lot of questions about do i need a portfolio to apply how does the application process work could you please pix go through it just very quickly and remind everyone how how the application process works, please thanks yeah i haven't myself applied to the program so i wonder if nafpreet actually might be better for this one yay that's a great idea nafpreet yes. so i'll see if i can remember this time a few months ago um <laughs> Yeah, so it's like I applied to quite a lot of different masters, and this was by far the easiest one to apply for, which is always great. Um, and yeah, it involved writing a short personal statement um, with some kind of guided questions. I don't think I remember um, submitting your CV and just kind of the basic personal details. Um, didn't have any portfolio, didn't need also any references. I don't believe, which is quite common for other uh, degree programs, which takes a lot of time. Um, and I think it was all through the, uh, the port. there's an, like an application portal, which is quite, that has like a very streamlined way of like tracking your application. If you do need any extra documents that will be on there. Um, that was a very, like very, very easy process overall. Yeah. Um... And I think the personal statement is really just a few paragraphs, not and and as Nefert says, we're responding to some prompts. And there, there as a policy, we we don't, we don't do interviews, so it's just the just the submitted application, and that's that. Amazing! Thanks both for sharing your experience. Beautiful. Since we are coming almost to the end of the session, I wouldn't like to end this open day without asking you the following one. <laughs> And it's, what is the CCI community like? Um, Nafpreet, would you like to share a bit about your experience being at CCI and how have you found it? Sure. And Thank I think you. the community of people is so interesting, so unlike any other space I've been in because everyone's coming from different backgrounds and different approaches. And they've come to this course because they're interested in it, but from a very different way to what you might be. So you get to kind of talk to people who are interested in this area in general, but have different ways of understanding it. So you get to share the kind of different 
um, thoughts and approaches, which really helps with their own work, but just general interest. And also just found that people are just interested in other things that I'm interested in, um, either like creative things, which we found out like really quickly just in before the classes um, or kind of other academic or other random things. So I met some really, really nice people that I've connected to in very different ways. I think the community um, in terms of the, very, the space in Camberwell is really, really, again, really amazing because you have access to so many facilities and it kind of makes the environment very kind of creative and energetic just because there's so much possibility and potential. Um, there's lots of really nice spaces to work in um, and just having everyone around, everyone's just, just kind of you can feel the creativity of everyone around you, which is like makes the community very like very positive and like lots of potential. Thank you, Nafri. Would you like to add something there, Pix, as well, about your experience being at CCI? Yeah, um, my experience with the community is a bit different as a staff member, and I, I think that. Uh, there's probably not just one CCI community. I think there are lots of different CCI communities and facets of the community. And, uh, and you'll, you'll find your own part of that or place in that. Um, but yeah, a lot of fabulous fashion. We keep saying that people just, <laughs> whatever, you don't have to be fashionable, but there are lots of creative looking people around. <laughs> thank you Vix. thank you Nafrit that's amazing so we finally made it to the end of the event thank you for joining us on this open day session of Brit and Vix. it was great to hear from both of you and I hope for everyone watching I hope it was a, an insightful presentation that you got all your questions answered about CCI and about the MA internet equalities if you want to find out more about MA Internet Equalities, you can visit our website, which we're going to be putting on the chat as well, arts.ac.uk slash CCI. And if you have any more questions that maybe were not covered or answered today, our email is always open for any queries. And it is uh, cci at arts.ac.uk. So please feel free to reach out if there's uh, something that we didn't cover today. And we also invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content and to follow us on Twitter and Instagram where we share a lot about opportunities and upcoming exhibitions um, and upcoming workshops and other activities that we organize here at CCI. You can follow us on UAL underscore CCI. We look forward to meeting you in real life very soon. Uh, looking forward to hearing from you if, if you have any other questions. And in the meantime, take care, everyone. <laughs> we'll speak very soon. Thank you so much. Take care.